Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, we were talking about the scientific process, and we focused in on the beginnings of the scientific process, hypothesis and observation, and then we looked at experiments, and within experiments, we talked about independent variables, the thing that the scientist is changing or the thing that the scientist is trying to see the effect of, and dependent variables, or the outcome that the scientist is gonna measure at the end of the experiment. Today, we're gonna to focus more on the last part, and this week, in general, we're gonna be focusing more on the last parts of the scientific process, analyzing results and drawing conclusions. And we are going to be using graphs as a tool to do that. So today, I'm gonna to introduce you to three different types of graphs, and we're gonna look at the different parts of a graph so that we can be prepared to later in the week use graphs to analyze results and draw conclusions. Let's get started. So the first type of graph we're gonna look at is a line graph. A line graph can be used to show how one variable changes in relation to another, and usually it's gonna show us how something changes over time. As an example, we could see how temperature changes throughout the year, uh, like this one that we have a picture of, or we could see how much a person's weight changes with how much they eat in a day but usually this is gonna be how something changes over time. Another type of graph that you may very well have seen before is called a bar graph. Bar graph is used to compare different independent variables in relation to each other. So in this case, uh, we can see how much of each vegetable was harvested from a garden, and we have a different set of bars for different months. We can see the blue bars show us how much of each of these vegetables was harvested in July, and the red bars show us how much of each vegetable, vegetable was harvested in August. Third type of graph we're going to look at is called a pie chart. Pie chart is used to show different proportions of parts of a whole, so how much of a whole thing uh, each thing makes up. In this case, how much of a pie did each person eat? From this picture, this pie chart right here, we can see that Gary definitely ate most of the pie and Jay and Joe Don just had a little bit of pie. Now I wanna start moving on to different parts of a graph. Uh, the different parts of a graph are something we're gonna talk about and you're gonna to have to be recognizing what they stand for when you look at a graph to be able to interpret them. First, we're gonna talk about the axes. One single is called an axis. That's why I have that in parentheses. And as we're going through these, whatever I am talking about is gonna be that highlighted uh, kind of light tan color. So we're gonna keep adding to this example we have here on the right. So the axes you can see are these lines that are on the edge of the graph. And there are two axes and I labeled them. The X axis is the horizontal line or the side to side line at the bottom of the graph. And the Y axis is the vertical line the up and down line on the left-hand side of the graph. And these are gonna be found on all line graphs and all bar graphs. They both need axes. Next, we're gonna talk about labels. Again, whatever I am talking about is going to be in that lighter tan color so that you can follow along with this picture on the right-hand side. The labels are a description of whatever type of data is being measured on that axis, whatever thing we're measuring. So it's important to note that the independent variable of an experiment is always gonna go on the x-axis. So by looking at which label is on which axis of a graph, you can tell something about the experiment. And the dependent variable will always go on the y-axis. This again is very important to know and it's very useful information when you're trying to interpret a graph. These, just like the axes, are going to be found on all line graphs and all bar graphs. Next, we're gonna look at scales. These scales are the numbers that show the units on the side of the graph. This shows how big any one magnitude is. They're found on line graphs and bar graphs, and frequently on bar graphs, on the x-axis, you might see words instead of numbers. Next, we've got the title of the graph. This is on top above where the uh, picture part of the graph would be. And the title is going to explain what the graph is about. This should give you a good idea of what experiment was conducted. 
This is found on all types of graphs. All three of the types of graphs that we looked at will have a title. Next is a key. You can see this is off usually to the side of the graph. And this gives the meaning of different colors when they are used on the graph. Uh, all three of the examples that we looked at earlier in this shot slideshow had a key. This is always going to be found on pie charts because they usually have different colors representing each different portion of the whole. And then sometimes it's going to be found on line graphs and sometimes it's going to be found on bar graphs depending on the graph. So now I want to go through an example of the parts of a graph. First, we can see the axes are the lines. On the bottom of the graph, we have the x-axis. On the side of the graph, uh, we have the y-axis. And this is the same line graph that we were looking at earlier. We've got labels. These are going to tell us what kind of data we expect to see on each axis. On the y-axis, we have a Fahrenheit, which is temperature, degrees Fahrenheit, how hot it is. And you'll notice this graph is not great because there is no label on the x-axis. It should say months of the year there. It's pretty obvious, but it should still say have a label. Next, we've got the scales. So these are the numbers uh, to give us meaning for the temperature shown by each line. And then this is an example of a place where we might have words instead of numbers for the scale on the bottom. We're still seeing change over time, but it's giving us the names of the months instead of a number of minutes or a number of hours or a number of months. Next, we've got the title, average temperature range. So we can see that these lines are showing the average temperature in New Orleans, Louisiana. The title kind of brings all the parts of the graph together for us. And finally, we have a key. You can see that we do have two different lines on this graph. So the blue line shows the low temperature for each of those months, and the red line shows the high temperature for each of those months in New Orleans. So that gives us a good idea of why we might want to use a key. All right, so this has been an overview of three different types of graphs, not all the types of graphs, but three that we're most likely to see, and the different parts of a graph, as well as an example of how those look on a real graph. That's all we're going to do for today. Next time we meet up, we're going to be focusing on how to get information out of a graph, how to read a graph.